Quecksilver is Quicksilver or Mercury, which was used in the hat trade with disastrous consequences for workers' health. This was well known. That's why we still say mad as a hatter. <laughs> Mercury is the third most toxic substance known to science. So what is dental amalgam? Amalgam, a mixture of one or more metals with mercury. The metal in this case is an alloy of roughly 40% silver, 30% tin, 28% copper and 2% zinc. The alloy is ground into a fine powder. That powder is then added to an equal amount of liquid mercury and mixed in the surgery to create a dental amalgam filling. Some of the mercury bonds with the surface of the alloy particles. The remaining free mercury escapes continually from the set material. In 1997, Cork Company, the manufacturers of dispersaloy, stated that their amalgam should not be used in the following situations in proximal or occlusal contact to dissimilar metal restorations, in patients with severe renal deficiency, in patients with known allergies to amalgam, for retrograde or endodontic filling, as a filling material for a cast crown, in children six and under, and in expectant mothers. Symptoms of chronic long-term low-level exposure to mercury vapour. Inhalation of mercury vapour over a long period may cause mercurialism, which is characterised by fine tremors and erythism. Tremors may affect the hands first, but may also become evident in the face, arms and legs. Erythism may be manifested by abnormal shyness, blushing, self-consciousness, depression or despondency, resentment of criticism, irritability or excitability, headache, fatigue and insomnia. In severe cases, hallucinations, loss of memory and mental deterioration may occur. Concentrations as low as 0.03 micrograms per cubic metre have induced psychiatric symptoms in humans. Renal involvement may be indicated by proteinuria, albuminuria, enzymuria and anuria. Other effects may include salivation, gingivitis, stomatitis, loosening of the teeth, blue lines on the gums, diarrhoea, chronic pneumonitis and mild anemia. Repeated exposure to mercury and its compounds may result in sensitisation. Intrauterine exposure may result in tremors and involuntary movement in infants. Mercury is excreted in breast milk. Paternal reproductive effects and effects on fertility have been reported in male rats following repeated inhalation exposures. The material safety data sheet for Titan, manufactured by Kerkorp, states the placement of a dental amalgam in a patient will increase the levels of mercury in the body of the patient. The only place dental amalgam is not regarded as toxic waste is in a living human mouth. All mercury silver fillings leak substantial amounts of mercury constantly. The amount increases with any kind of stimulation and as a result mercury from fillings produces the majority of human exposure to mercury. The US Occupational Safety and Health Authority sets a maximum allowable mercury vapour concentration for a 40 hour per week occupational exposure at a time weighted average of 50 micrograms of mercury per cubic metre. The United States Environmental Protection Agency regulates for everyone else, especially pregnant women and children. Their maximum allowable mercury vapour concentration is 0.3 micrograms of mercury per cubic metre. The US Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry states that a transient exposure to levels of mercury vapour as low as 0.02 micrograms of mercury per cubic metre is considered acute, immediately hazardous to health. Criteria 118, published by the World Health Organisation in 1991, reports on dietary exposure to mercury. 
This was the first time that mercury from dental amalgam had been included as a dietary source of mercury. Air and water, negligible amounts. Other food, 0.3 micrograms per day of inorganic mercury. Fish and seafood, 2.3 micrograms per day of methyl mercury. Dental amalgam, 3 to 17 micrograms per day of mercury vapour. Their results indicate that dental amalgam provides a dietary source of mercury up to six times greater than all other sources combined, including seafood. A more recent study indicates that two-thirds of the mercury in the bodies of humans with amalgam fillings comes from the fillings. The tolerable daily intake, TDI, is the amount of a substance which most people in the population are able to cope with. It is not a safe level. In 1995, research commissioned by Health Canada was published. This was the first time mercury from dental amalgam was considered in an official risk assessment study. It sent shockwaves through the dental establishment. It found that the tolerable daily intake was exceeded in the case of adults with four or more amalgam fillings. For teens, this figure drops to three. Children and toddlers can have only one amalgam filling before being exposed to levels of mercury above the TDI set out by the US and Canadian governments. This led Health Canada to issue new recommendations to dentists. Amalgam should not be placed in pregnant women, in people with kidney dysfunction and should not be used in children. Dentists should acknowledge the patient's right to decline treatment with any dental material. The amount of mercury in the bodies of the children was directly proportional to the number of amalgam fillings in their mother's mouths. Amalgam removal has been shown to be effective in reducing mercury levels to the levels of those in people without amalgam fillings. What you are seeing is the typical method of removing an amalgam filling as performed in dental surgeries throughout the world and as still taught in universities today. Cutting an amalgam filling immediately produces very high levels of mercury vapour in the mouth. Measurements 18 inches from the mouth in this procedure reveal levels of mercury vapour of 4,000 micrograms per cubic metre. Cutting an amalgam filling also produces a vast cloud of microscopic amalgam particles. These particles are easily inhaled all the way to the alveoli of the lungs, the final interface between the environment, air and your blood. The longer the drill is touching the filling, the more mercury vapour and particles are being released. Most dental schools teach this as the way to remove dental amalgam. With reference to the fact that mercury is a multipotent toxin with effects on several levels of the biochemical dynamics of the cell, amalgam must be considered to be an unsuitable material for dental restorations. This is especially true since fully adequate and less toxic alternatives are available. The safety margin it was thought existed with respect to mercury exposure from dental amalgam has been erased. The no observable effects level is the lowest concentration of a substance in the environment that does not cause any observable effects in the human body. According to the World Health Organization, the Noel for mercury is zero. This means that exposure to any level of mercury, no matter how minute the quantity, constitutes a serious and avoidable risk to human health. There is no level of mercury in a room or a mouth that can be considered safe. Better alternatives to dental amalgam are readily available. Removal of dental amalgam is hazardous. Strict protocols must be applied for the safety of the patient and the dental personnel. Mercury is the third most toxic substance known to science.
Mercury is released continuously from dental amalgam fillings for the life of the fillings. Mercury damages blood vessel walls. Mercury causes infertility, miscarriage, birth defects, stillbirths, disturbed menstruation, learning deficits in children. Mercury toxicity symptoms mimic a number of degenerative and autoimmune diseases. Mercury has a no observable effects level of zero, 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 zero.